been a year now since I bought my Raspberry Pi computer. I got caught up in all that pre-ordering and stuff when it first got announced. And guess what? Like an awful lot of people, I haven't done anything with it. It's still sat in its sealed box. I've never really found the time to get round to opening it up. Well, I finally found the time. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put on the XBMC Media Player software. Now there's an advantage to waiting around like I've done for a year, they've managed to iron out all the kinks and people have made a nice simple self-installing piece of software and I'm going to show you how it goes onto the device. First off, you need a Raspberry Pi of course, rather obviously, you need a power supply, a mains to micro USB, an HDMI lead to attach it up to your TV screen, an SD card, nice fast one, maybe class 6 or class 10. Then you need a wireless controller. I'm using the Lenovo N5902, but the important thing is make sure you're using an RF one, not a Bluetooth one. It's a lot easier. Uh, even though this has a blue dongle on it, ignore that. It's an RF keyboard, this one. You'll also need a live connection up to the internet over a Ethernet cable rather than wireless. However, later on, you will be able to put on wireless, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. I'm going to have this wireless by the end of the video, but it's got to start off wired. I've also got a little case for it. This is an awful little cheap, crappy case I picked up, but I've got a case anyway. Now, you'll need your video files or your media files. Most people will have these on a hard drive. But I've already got mine on this Drobo, which is just four hard drives stuck together. And that's connected up to my Mac Mini, which serves the video files out over my home network. Right, the first thing we need to do is get the files we need onto that SD card. So put it into your computer. I'm using a Mac here. You can see there's no files on that card at all at the moment. And I'm going to download the relevant software from the Rasp BMC website. So we'll just type that in here. And there you can see it at the top. Now, if we go into the download thing here, here's the files that we need. This is telling us what we have to do. It sounds pretty complicated, but it isn't. All you have to do is cut and paste that line into the terminal program. Now, let's get terminal up and running. So that's in the utilities section on here. There we go. That's the terminal up and running on the left there. So rather than type it in, which is what it says, I'm cutting and pasting it into that window there. So as soon as I paste it in, that happens. Whatever that is, I don't care. It's just doing something. Good luck to it. Next thing, it's done that. So we'll press return and we'll just copy and paste the next line into it as well. So paste it in, press return. It's asking for a password. That's my password for my Mac, the usual one for the administration thing that you have to type in when you install programs and stuff. Now, the next bit, you've got to make sure you install the software to the right part of your computer, the card I've put into it, not the hard drive. Notice the different names at the end here. Disk one is the SD card. So I'll cut and paste that into here. You could type it, of course press return and what that's going to do is going to get all the files downloaded off the internet after I've said yes because I've uh, already done it before and it's going to get those files onto the computer and then put them on the SD card so it takes a short while to do this it downloads everything it needs and puts it onto the SD card makes the uh, SD card have the right uh, formats and folders and things on it as well at the end of it it asks us if we want to do any other changes any alterations I say no to that so we just do it nice and simple and then all we have to do, we have to eject that SD card out of the computer. And that's it. So that's that's the complicated bit, I'd say. After that, it's easy sailing. Is it a word? Easy, easy, easy going, plain sailing? Anyway, you know what I mean. Open up the box, get the Raspberry Pi out of here. It's just down at the bottom there. It would be a bit embarrassing now if after all this time it doesn't work, wouldn't it? But let's hope that's not going to be the case. You've seen these things before a million times. I'm not going to go through it now. Let's just get this thing up and running as quick as possible. I'm going to stick it inside this uh, nasty little plastic case. I think I bought this for about a pound about eight months ago. But anyway, it's better being in a case. You're not going to end up touching it all. Um, put the uh, network cable into that. Remember, that's got to be a live network cable, obviously, going to the other end. Putting the RF dongle for the keyboard in here. There's only two USBs on there, so uh, it's better off having a sort of all-in-one device like I've got. Put in the HDMI lead into this side here, and then around this side, we've just got two things to do. We've got to put in the power supply, which is that uh, micro USB power there. Uh, ignore the big scar on the hand, please. Uh, that was just uh, done while rescuing an orphan from a fire. Uh, nothing nothing important. Don't really want to go on about it. And then the SD card goes into there. 
and uh, that's it right so we're ready to get up and running there so all we have to do uh, put the um, hdmi lead into the back of the tv turn on the power little light comes on there good it means that this thing actually works and then all this stuff starts coming up on the screen i don't care what any of that stuff is it's just doing what it's supposed to be doing you get all these different menus and progress bars and things now remember this is just the first install it doesn't do this every time this is just when it first boots up after this your average boot time is probably about 15 20 seconds or something to get it up and running from being off but the first time what it's doing is it's installing things to the card it's downloading new things it's updating the raspberry mc thing so it's all bang up to date it's self updating as well which is good so you'll only have to do that once right it's working we're up and running we're in the screen that I recognize now I'm quite familiar with XBMC using it on other computers so I know what I have to do here this is probably a little bit tricky if you're starting from scratch you'll have to read up on this but basically what I'm doing is I'm getting my network connection uh, up and running as a shortcut so I can now try any of the files that are on my network. I'll try this one that I uh, did before on my motorcycle review. As you can see it's uh, running nice and smoothly. It's uh, 720p this file although I believe uh, this will function with 1080p. Notice a bit of an artifact on the screen that's just because I've fast forwarded. It doesn't do that after that. It's only when you sort of jump into the middle of a scene uh, and then it just does it for a second. But it's all working fine. Right, now also, if I try a, a commercial file, uh, and this is an X264 file, again, 720p, it looks great, the sound's fine, everything works brilliantly. So let's move on from here, let's make things a little bit more complicated. We were on that network cable, let's go wireless. I'm going to get this YPI um, USB wireless N thing, plug it in here, and take out the network cable. And now I've got to configure that. Now, how would you configure it? Well, there is actually a piece of software specifically for that in the program. So you don't have to jump out of it to control your Wi-Fi. You've got to put in your SSID here and you've got to put in the password for it. But once you've done that, rebooted, it will connect to your wireless network. So now I've got it connecting wirelessly. Again, we'll go back in one of these video files that I was trying before. There's a little bit of a lag here. It takes a little bit more time to buffer it up because of course a uh, wireless connection, even wireless head, isn't going to be as good as a networked uh, wire. Now that's a bit ugly still. I don't really want that sitting there in front of the television. So what am I going to do about that? Well, we can sort that out as well. Take off the power plug there. Just leave the USB lead. I'm going to take out this HDMI lead as well, because what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, make it smaller. I'm going to, I've got a little small HDMI lead here. I managed to get this off uh, eBay. You'll find these on eBay if you want, little tiny ones. Uh, also, I've got a sticky back pad here, which is going on the back of the box, which is another good reason for having a box sticking it to the back of the TV screen and I'm going to plug that HDMI lead into the back of the TV and the USB, I've actually got a USB um, sort of service plug or something on the back of the television but it's got enough power in it to power the Raspberry Pi so now it's all combined in one. The television has everything on the back of it and of course it doesn't need line of sight so I can use a remote and stuff. I'll show you this little trick as well. It's also got Apple's AirPlay in it. So I'm doing AirPlay now. I'm playing a YouTube clip. I'm sending it to the uh, Raspberry Pi. It's uh, taking a little while to get connected. I think this would be faster again if it was networked over a cable rather than Wi-Fi. But I've sort of uh, skipped a bit of this because it's getting a bit boring waiting for it. But there you go. It's up and running now. So that's me streaming a file uh, that I'm downloading onto my phone and then streaming it over uh, AirPlay to the Raspberry Pi. So I think that works pretty well overall. Um, not bad. I mean, maybe you could do it cheaper if you bought a sort of purpose-made thing. But since this is sitting around at home doing nothing, I don't think that was bad at all. Very easy to set up and it works a lot better than I expected in the end. So that's it for the moment. Thanks for watching.